Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Bermudian Church of the Brethren. I'm Pastor Larry Dentler. We welcome you on this Sunday, April 26th, um, to our time of worship and message. We're so happy that, that you can join us today. As we uh, come together, uh, a couple announcements. Mike and Sandy Neff would like to say thank you to everyone who has uh, sent checks in for support of the New Hope Ministries uh, virtual walk that they're going to be sharing in. And uh, if, if there are others of you who have been wanting to get, send a check and haven't done that yet, those should be to them by this Thursday. Thank you for that. And I want to say thank you on behalf of the church family, uh, and especially from the stewards, for all those who have been sending in your tithes and your offerings. And it's been a little overwhelming. Almost every day in the mail there are some. And I just thank you for thinking about us during this time. Um, as details continue to come in and things change almost daily, you know, uh, and we begin to think about being able to reopen, being able to be back together as a church family, I want you to know that your church board is beginning to work towards that and make plans towards that, staying in tune with what's going on uh, we certainly don't know anything for sure yet, but I just wanted you to know that uh, it's on our minds and we're beginning to work that way. Uh, but as we think about that, I want to answer a question that I've been asked a lot, and that is that, yes, yes, there will continue to be an online presence, even once we get to a place where we can have folks back here in the sanctuary. Uh, your response to these online services has been so good, and we've been able to welcome folks from beyond our own circle and some folks from our church family who aren't able to come to church anymore, uh, that yes, yes, we will continue to do an online kind of presence even after we're back together. And uh, speaking of that, I'd like to invite you to say happy birthday with me uh, to one of those friends who has been joining us from afar. Elaine Singer is from Davenport, Florida. She is a neighbor to my brother and sister-in-law, Louie and Margaret Lee, there, and has been watching our services and enjoying being part of our worshiping community. And Elaine turned 90 this week, and I thought we wanted to say, Elaine, happy birthday to you, and we're so thankful you can watch our services, and I think we ought to sing to you. Uh, so join me from where you are as we sing to Elaine, who's been worshiping with us uh, all the way from Davenport. Florida. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Elaine. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear sister, and we hope you had a, a wonderful birthday. I saw the parade that went by your house to wish you a happy birthday. Uh, glad, glad you're with us. Let's do some singing together, and we're going to, this morning we're going to have a children's story, and uh, we're going to do a couple songs that are a little more uh, for children, but I think for all of us, uh, so I hope you enjoy them today. But let's begin by reflecting on the love of our Lord Jesus. Isn't the love of Jesus something wonderful, wonderful? Wonderful, oh, isn't the love of Jesus something wonderful? Wonderful, his love for me. Let's sing it again. Isn't the love of Jesus something wonderful? Wonderful, wonderful, oh, isn't the love of Jesus something wonderful? Wonderful, his love for me. I hope you can say amen to that. The ancient, ancient hymn, Be Thou My Vision. We seek the Lord to show us his way and his will as we go through these times. Uh, let's sing this great old hymn together. Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart. Not be all else to me, save that thou art. Thou my best thought, by day or by night. Waking or sleeping, 
thy presence my light. Be thou my wisdom and thou my true word. I ever with thee and thou with me, Lord. Thou my great father, I thy true son. Thou in me dwelling and I with thee one. Riches I heed not, nor man's empty praise. Thou mine inheritance, now and always. Thou and thou only, first in my heart. High King of heaven, my treasure thou art. High King of heaven, my victory won. May I reach heaven's joys, bright heaven's sun. Heart of my own heart, whatever befall, still be my vision, O ruler of all. Amen. Well, a lot of us learned in Sunday school years ago, this old light of mine. I like to sing it these days with my grandson, two-year-old Jackson. Uh, it still warms our heart. And I think in these quarantine days, we're called to be light, uh, even when things seem a little dark. So let's sing it. Boys and girls, you help your parents sing it. And uh, we'll do some of the motions too. Uh, let's enjoy this wonderful little song that so many of us have known most of our lives. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Underneath a bushel, no, I'm gonna let it shine. Underneath a bushel, no, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Don't let Satan it out. I'm gonna let it shine. Don't let Satan it out. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Way up on a candlestick, I'm gonna let it shine. Way up on a candlestick, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine till Jesus comes, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine till Jesus comes, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Amen. Amen. Fun to sing those, those uh, songs from our childhood. As we come to prayer time, let me uh, share a few updates. Uh, this week we were invited to pray for Joanne Miller's son, Michael, who lives in Georgia. He had emergency surgery on Monday. And Sue Dordor's friend, uh, Sarah Myers, had brain surgery on Monday to remove fluid from her brain. Mary Stover's nephew, Van, uh, suffered a stroke a few weeks ago. He's in rehab now, but really having trouble uh, starting to walk again. Uh, Kathy and I invite your prayers for our family, our, our 10-year-old grandson, Jericho. His father, John Carroll, died on Thursday in Florida. 
uh, his parents, many of you know his parents, John and Janet Carroll of East Berlin, and uh, his siblings and his grandparents and friends. Uh, his body is being returned uh, for the funeral, and I will officiate that graveside service uh, in these days of quarantine and such. Uh, funeral services are limited. That's kind of a shame, but that's just the way it is. And so that will be private with just the family, but I certainly invite your prayers for Jericho and uh, for John's family and for Kathy and I and Jesse. Ken Warren finally got some word uh, about this possibility of uh, an implant uh, that might help his back pain. He's scheduled for some x-rays on May 4th and then a new appointment on May 5th. We continue to pray for Tracy Kaufman's uh, sister Lori, who's been going through a really difficult time. We have been praying for Nan Jacobs, daughter Donna. She's home now, a uh, long way to go, but progressing well. We continue to pray for Linda Meck, who's still dealing with this uh, dental nerve damage. Uh, we continue to pray for Gloria Gerber as she waits uh, for that time when she can have the, the surgery that, that she needs. Mike and Sandy Neff have given us an update on Luther Reinhardt, who's been on our prayer list. Uh, he had successful lymph node cancer surgery. It was very painful recovery. All the tubes and drains have been removed now, and the scans show him to be cancer-free, and we praise the Lord for that. And he extends uh, thanks to you for your prayers and for our church family. Uh, let's pray together. Lord, it's good to be together on this Lord's Day. We would love to be here in the sanctuary, <coughs> but it's good to be together this way. And we're thankful for those who join us uh, from all over our church family. Uh, but for those who have joined our little community from afar, uh, like Elaine, that we could celebrate her birthday today. And for folks near and far who have found us and are joining us, Thank you, Lord, for that gift, and bless each one. We have named some, Lord, who have had surgeries this week, and we pray for your healing, your comfort, uh, for your special care. We have lifted some joys for those who are recovering well. To be able to say cancer-free is always a blessing, Lord. Thank you. And we've remembered some loss uh, I ask that you would be with John's family and be with my dear Jericho and with Jesse and with Kathy and I and all of John's family uh, as we remember his life and uh, share in this time together. Lord, uh, we would continue to pray for our nation, our state, our community through these days. Oh, how we pray that soon things may start to open back up. We're especially worried about businesses that have had to be closed for so long now, about persons who have been out of work. Uh, please, please, Lord, give us wisdom and give us insight and give us uh, good sense, but help us to get to a place where we can get people back to work and, and help us, Lord, uh, by your power to turn the curve so that the danger may may be less and give us wisdom as a church family as we move towards those times when we may be able to be back together because lord you know how we yearn for that bless our nation and the world in in this difficult time lord we thank you for each family listening each individual young and old uh, thank you for the technology that allows us to be together this way for for Brother Mike, who has done such a good job of helping us uh, present this this way. Oh, Lord, be near. We need you. Sometimes we feel anxious during these days. Sometimes we feel angry during these days. Sometimes we just feel wore out during these days. Uh, as teachers are teaching uh, by computer and parents are trying to help their students, their children learn at home and some are needing to work from home and some are out of work and oh Lord, what a time it is. So whatever we need and you know us best, Father, whatever we need, would you come to us through your Son, our Lord Jesus and bring us your touch of comfort, of healing, of hope, uh, of joy, 
of confidence, of trust. And we'll give you praise and honor and glory for you are worthy. And we'll lift all these prayers in the precious and holy and mighty name of Jesus Christ our Lord as we remember the prayer he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As I shared about today's service, I uh, said we were going to have a, a children's story today. And so I invite you now, boys and girls, to come right up close to the, the TV or the computer screen that you're watching on uh, so that uh, we can enjoy this story together. This is a, from a little storybook that Pastor Larry had when he was just a little boy. And it's a story that's always stuck in my mind. I've loved it. And for years, whenever I was in a used bookstore, any place where they had old, because I'm very old, you know, uh, they had old children's story books I'd look for. I never could find it, but I was able to find it online, uh, complete with the pictures. And it brought back such, such a wonderful memory, and I wanted to share it with you. And we're going to put the, the pictures up on the full screen now. And uh, so Mike's going to do that. Go ahead and put the picture up full screen. And I'm going to read you the story. And uh, the, these pictures look old, too, because <laughs> Pastor Larry's old. But it's a great story. So let me share it. It's called Our Daily Bread. There once was a little boy, and his mother gave him a fresh baked brown roll for his breakfast. And the little boy smelled it, and it smelled so good. And he said, thank you, mother. Thank you for my nice brown roll. And his mother smiled, laughed, said, oh, don't thank me. Thank the miller who made the, the flour so that I could bake this roll. Now, boys and girls, in, in days gone by, you didn't go to the grocery store to buy the flour to bake something, but you would go to the local mill where they had big stones, and the farmers would bring their grain there, and the stones would grind it up into the fine, wonderful flour, and then the mommies and daddies could bake it. And so he went to the local mill, and he said, thank you, Mr. Miller. Thank you for my nice brown roll. And the miller laughed and said, oh, don't thank me. Thank the farmer. Well, the little boy went running down the road to the, the farmer. Now, you see this picture in days gone by. Sometimes we didn't have the big tractors and the big equipment to harvest the grain, sometimes they did that by hand. And you see this farmer pulling the wheat together into what they called sheaves. And the little boy ran to the farmer and he said, Thank you, farmer. Thank you for my nice brown roll. And the farmer laughed and said, Oh, thank you, but don't thank me. Thank the rain, because I only planted the wheat the little boy looked up and saw the clouds. It was about to rain. And so he ran home into his house and looked out the window just as he saw the raindrops falling. He looked up into the sky and he said, Thank you, rain. Thank you for my nice brown roll. And the rain said, Oh, don't thank me. Thank the sun. I only helped a little bit. Just about that time, the rain stopped and the sun began to shine and the little boy went out and ran into the backyard where his favorite apple tree was and sat there in the fence and felt the warm sun on his face and he said, thank you, son. Thank you for my nice brown roll. And the son said, oh, don't thank me. 
thank God who made me. And so the little boy went back home, back to the kitchen, where the, the warm smell of the fresh baked bread was still in the air. And he folded his hands and he said, Thank you, God. Thank you for my nice brown roll. You know, we're living in a time, boys and girls, when some things are different, aren't they? You're home from school. If you're, if, if you're of school age, you're home from school, and maybe you're needing to do assignments on the computer. Maybe that's difficult. Maybe we're not allowed to go see Grandma and Grandpa or to go see our friends. Maybe mommy or daddy normally went to work, but now they're having to work from home, or maybe they're off work completely. And so that has made the family budget a little tight. But you know, every day, there are so many blessings that we can turn to and know that God has provided for us. And I hope you'll remember the story of this little boy and his fresh-baked roll and how he thanked his mama and he thanked the miller and he thanked the farmer and the rain and the sun. But ultimately, he thanked God. Let me pray with you. Lord, thank you for these boys and girls and all who are listening. And may we be a thankful people. Even when there's stress or problems in our lives, we have much to be thankful for. And may we, like this little boy, learn to say thank you to you. Thank you, Lord, for this time. Bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, boys and girls. Uh, this week, on my Wednesday's Word email I send out, I talked about a, a song that I learned when I was a little boy in Sunday school. It's called Jesus Bids Us Shine, and it talks about how each of us can shine for Jesus in our little corner. And right now, some of us are kind of stuck in the corner because we're not allowed to be moving around much. And some people said, emailed me or talked to me and said, I remember that song from my childhood, but I had forgotten it. And others said, that's a pretty little song, but you'll have to teach us the tune. So we're going to sing it this morning. Uh, it's here on the screen. And it, the words seem so appropriate for this time. Says, in this world is darkness, so we must shine. You in your small corner and I in mine. So I'm going to sing through this first verse once and then invite everybody to join along. And then there are two other verses. Here's how it goes. Jesus bids us shine with a clear, pure light Like a little candle burning in the night in this world is darkness, so we must shine. You in your small corner, and I in mine. Join me now. Jesus bids us shine with a clear, pure light, like a little candle burning in the night. In this world is darkness, so we must shine. You in your small corner, and I in mine. Jesus bids us shine, first of all, for him. Well, he sees and knows it, if our lights are dim. He looks down from heaven to see us shine. You in your small corner, and I in mine. Jesus bids us shine, then for all around. Many kinds of darkness in the world are found. Sin and want and sorrow, so we must shine. You in your small corner, and I in mine. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. I hope that'll be a little tune now that sticks with you and you might remember to shine for Jesus. Mm -hmm. 
I don't know about you, but my mother had some great lines. And although she's been gone for 50 years, I can still hear her say, it's time for you to go outside and get the stink blown off you. I found another list online of some famous moms saying, see if you recognize any of these. You're cruising for a bruising. If you don't quit it, you're going to get it. Those socks won't pick up themselves. If you keep looking like that, your face is going to stick like that. Am I talking to a brick wall? I don't care who started it. I said, stop it. If you don't stop crying, I'm going to give you something to cry about. Do you think I'm made of money? Don't give me that attitude. Oh, I feel like I'm talking to I'm blue in the face. Any of those familiar? <laughs> and here's the one I'm thinking of today. I hope you learned your lesson. Many years ago, a wise pastoral mentor shared with a young, fresh in ministry Larry at a time when some criticism had come my way. It had blindsided me and had me feeling really depressed. And my wise mentor shared with me that criticism will always come when you're in ministry. That's just part of it along with the other storms of life. But he told me, he said, whenever criticism comes, whenever your plans go awry, whenever troubles seem to overtake you, get alone with the Lord and pray, Lord, what are you trying to teach me through all of this? Because we must remember that while the Lord doesn't cause our sufferings and our problems, in his absolute sovereignty, he allows them. And scripture is very clear that when he allows them, there is a reason. Always, always. Well, through 48 years of ministry, this council has served me pretty well. And as I've reflected on these days that we're living through right now, unlike anything I've experienced in my 68 years, I've done a lot of asking. Lord, what are you trying to teach me in all this? And I want to share with you some learnings from Larry's heart and experience in these days. Would you pray with me, please? Lord, thank you now as we uh, would come to open your word. We pray that you would be with us by the power of your Holy Spirit, that your Holy Spirit would be our teacher and open our hearts and minds to receive from you and that this poor messenger be in the background. But Lord, your truth, your perfect truth be what's front and center. So open our hearts to you and teach us, we pray, in Jesus' name, wonderful name, amen. Find your Bibles, please, and turn with me to Matthew chapter 6, 19 to 21, from the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 6, 19 to 21. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. 
May the Lord add his blessing to our reading, our hearing, and our consideration of his precious word today. Amen. So four things that I've been learning in this quarantine. Number one is that being out of control helps me to be reminded that God is in control. Let me, let's read that one again. Being out of control helps me be reminded that God is in control. This COVID-19 crisis has impacted us in so many ways. And one that has shaken most people the hardest is to not be free to do just what they want. Plans have been destroyed. Schedules have changed. Things we never thought we'd see, we're living. We were pretty comfortable. And we thought we were in control. And it's part of our American DNA, I think. We like to be in control. We want to be in control. So these days when we're not feeling in control have really, really shaken us. Perhaps it's good to be reminded how frail our existence really is and that the Lord... The Lord is the one who's really in control. We never have been in control. That was an illusion. And now we're learning when we feel out of control that our great Lord is in control. In Isaiah 45, 7, I create both light and darkness. I bring both blessing and disaster. I, the Lord, do all these things. And in the New Testament, Colossians 1.17, before anything was created, he was already there. He holds everything together. And from a psalm which many of us have memorized and we know well and we love, Psalm 46.10, the Lord says, Be still and know that I am God. The phrase, be still, literally means to stop fighting. The truth is that even when you and I have felt very much in control, we weren't. We weren't. God, the one who loves you, the one who created you, the one who died for you, the one who saved you, the one who intercedes for you, he is in control. And we must Remember that and learn that. Second, life does not revolve around stuff. It's amazing, isn't it, how quickly things changed. Savings account and retirement funds evaporated. Job security went away. Oh, we get so focused on stuff, don't we? And Sports and entertainment stars were our heroes. Now we realize that they're really of little importance. Many of us collect this or that for a whole lifetime, and then what happens? We die, and our families bring in a dumpster and throw all this stuff that we cherished into a dumpster. Perhaps it's good to be reminded that the things of this world are so ridiculously temporary. They really are. We, we focus so much on the stuff of this world and when we think of all of eternity... This little bitty time that we live and worry about this stuff is just a speck in that realm of eternity. In the passage from Matthew 6, which we read just a minute ago, 
Jesus reminds us of, of this truth and he challenges us to store up for yourselves treasures in heaven. If we put as much time into preparing for eternity as we do into worrying about the stuff of this world, what a difference it would make. And the Apostle Paul says the same thing. He says, set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. Some of us have found during these days, we found ourselves much more in tune to what the Bible says about the last days and a lot less worried about that trinket or that collectible that used to be our main focus. Three, I'm learning that the difficult times bring out the worst and the best in people. We see it. The best, the worst. There's an old Mennonite, Mennonite offertory statement that says, and I love it, no matter what we say or do, this offering, Lord, is what we really think of you. <laughs> we say we have faith. Is that faith sustaining us right now? We say we trust God. Do our words and our actions reflect that trust? Brothers and sisters, these days of testing will reveal the truth of our hearts. What did Jesus say? For where your treasure is, there your heart will be. Perhaps it's good to be reminded that this time of uncertainty forces us to put our money where our mouth is when it comes to actually living out the faith that we claim we have. Jesus, again in the Sermon on the Mount, says, You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. We just sang that. This little light of mine. And the writer of Romans in the New Testament says, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Boy, it's my prayer. I hope it's yours. Lord, let this time bring out the best of you in my words and actions. Lord, let this time bring out the best of you in my words and in my actions. Fourth thing I'm learning is that I have one certainty. <laughs> and it certainly isn't tomorrow. Things we trusted and didn't give a second thought to, gone like being able to assemble here on a Sunday morning. A virus you can't see and spreads so insidiously. Life here today, gone tomorrow. Part of the stress-inducing nature of this time is the uncertainty of these days. I was absolutely certain of this. I was completely sure of that. I had no questions about those. <laughs> now all that certainty seems gone. Perhaps it's good to be reminded that there is only one real certainty in life. Prophet Isaiah says, don't you know? Haven't you been listening? 
Yahweh is the one and only everlasting God, the creator of all you can see and imagine. He never gets weary or worn out. His intelligence is unlimited. He is never puzzled over what to do. And James, the brother of our Lord, says, Now listen, you who say, Today or tomorrow we'll go to this city or that city, spend a year there, carry on business, and make money. Why, you do not even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. And the psalm writer says, Lord, what are human beings that you care for them? Mere mortals that you think of them, they are like a breath. Their days are like a fleeting shadow. The death of my former son-in-law, John, this week sure brings that home for me. Life is fleeting. Life is uncertain. We have no guarantees of tomorrow. And our knowledge is so limited even when we think we're so smart. Have you been able to even give a thought that life may never again be as we have lived it? This time may change everything for a long, 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 long time. Or a year from now, we may look back at this all as a bad dream and wear a t-shirt that says, I survived quarantine 2020. Who knows? I don't know. You don't know. But one thing I do know. Jesus Christ died on the cross for Larry's sins. And when this fleeting life is over, the best is yet to come. So I've been learning during these quarantine days and I've learned a few things. That God is in control and I'm not. And I never have been, nor have you. That life does not revolve around things and stuff that I too often have placed so much value in. That difficult times can really bring out the worst or the best in people. And I really, really want these days to bring out the best of Christ in me and my witness to others. And that I really, I really only have one certainty in this life. And my certainty is in Jesus Christ and in Christ alone. And I pray, dear ones, to all listening, Oh, I pray that you have entrusted your heart to his care too. That you have said yes to Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and let him begin to mold you and to shape you and to teach you how to be more and more like him. How to allow him to be in control how to allow him to be the value in your life. How to allow him to bring out the best in you. And how to allow him to give you a blessed assurance, a certainty in life. Dear ones, if you've not done that, please, I pray you will. So, 
my brothers and sisters. That's what I've been learning in these days of quarantine. How about you? What are you learning? Amen. The little chorus says it so well that in these days, more than any time probably in our lives, we must keep our eyes upon Jesus. Sing it with me. We'll sing it through it twice. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face and the things of this earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace well brothers and sisters thank you for joining us today I hope these thoughts have been a blessing for you. I hope they'll make you think, reflect. Uh, as you uh, watch this from your homes uh, today, I will be here in the sanctuary on my Sunday morning prayer walk among these pews, stopping at each place, remembering who sits in that pew, and praying for you, praying for each of you as families and as individuals, and, uh, and praying for you who watch from a distance too. And uh, I really do pray that uh, this time together was a blessing and that you'll be able to be with us next week and that the Lord will be with you through this week. Uh, my love, uh, my prayers, my care uh, is certainly with you. And the Lord is with you too. God bless you, dear friends. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for our morning together. Bless us as we think and as we listen for you to show us what you would teach us during this unusual time. Open our hearts as we've thought, reflected, and read scripture and prayed. Teach us, Lord. Teach us. Teach us. Now go with us through this day and this week and this season we are in. And bless each one, we pray, in the precious and holy and matchless and mighty name of Jesus our Lord. Amen. God bless you, friends.